Steelers. And the new movie trivia showdown! You know, when people tell you, just be yourself, just be yourself. It's cool to be yourself when you're winners like we are. Right, baby, we're back. itself is the best faction in this and possibly the only one. We were the best champions ever. For that's Christian, I'm Mark. We are the Schmoes. We created this game and we're going to dominate. Bye-bye. Wadman Makuka versus Mark Yodi Riley. Here is the final question in the Ultimate Showdown. What famous brother sister duo appear in the cast of 16 Candles? John and Joan Cusack. That's correct. Mark Riley has won in the Ultimate Showdown. Superman is flying in. Six, John and Joan Cusack. Oh. Hey! by the Schmodown champion, Mark Riley. Where do you see Dan Merle's future going in this show? Oh, he's gonna go very, very far. You can see that he's prepped, that he's done this before. The lights do not get to him. I can see uh, Merle actually going to the finals, maybe taking me on. And your winner is the new been dishonest as of today the knights of ken have begun okay.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the kickoff of season six of the movie Trivia Schmodown live in New York. Please welcome to the stage, Mark Baby Carrot Allen. in New York City. This is also the very first time that the Movie Trivia Schmodown has attempted to live stream. This is being viewed by people across the globe right now. And this is true. I was just, I was told this backstage right before I, I came out here that we have over 5,000 people are watching the live stream right now. 5,000. Which means, according to Netflix, 45 million people are watching this live stream. <laughs> it's going to be good, and I'm happy to be in the Big Apple, and you have people all around the world from New Jersey to Tokyo watching this right now. People in my adopted home of Los Angeles are watching this on Wi-Fi. People from my hometown of Williamsburg, Virginia are watching this on dial-up. And it's so exciting <laughs> because the Schmodown, yes, there's a lot of people that love it in America, but we have people that flew from other countries to be here tonight. Make some noise if you flew from another country to be here today. Where do you fly from, sir? You flew from England to be here tonight. They flew from England. And, but as I just said, it's being live streamed. You could have stayed home for $3 and caught the whole thing. But you made it here, and the reason why they made it here, the reason why you all guys came out here tonight is because season six, this is the kickoff, and you wanted to do it right. You wanted to do it special. You wanted to do it in the greatest city in the world. And so it gives me great pride to actually get to say something and be honest about it that I have waited my entire career to say live from New York, it's Saturday night.
talking about where we're going to go, and I've been telling you guys who've been following it, that the goal is to keep moving forward, to make sure that we keep getting the schmo down in front of more eyes. We're doing a live stream now, but it's the question was, we did it in L.A., we did a live show, and we'll do more than there. But where do we go first? And I looked and I said, stop asking stupid questions. We're going to New York. <laughs> That's right. And I'm glad, buddy. I'm glad. I'm glad to be home. Yeah. The energy. I mean, the show, again, that we're going to have tonight is going to be something else. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is so nice to be here in the Barclays Center adjacent uh, room Mark, no, it's theater. Just, no, 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 no. It's <laughs> and as you and I uh, prepare our skit for hosting the Oscars this yes. year, I think it's important to remember that, yeah, this is your hometown, but you also have two fantastic matches oh, that the entire globe is going to get to witness here tonight. The first match that we have, you call it an undercard, I call it a main event. Yeah, well, listen, look, the thing is, these are two, the whole point of this thing is to keep building new competitors. And who better, last year, two Rookie of the Year nominees, first of all, you got the Cobra, Chance Ellison. Okay, mixed. Uh, mixed. I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it. He ran in some really rotten circles, you know, and, and so he deserves the booze. Good competitor, though, and proved what he did in the, in the teams. And he had a nice run against the champion, Ethan Irwin, came up short. But then you got Janine the Machine. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. They love her. They love her. And they should. They should. Yeah, they should. Yeah, so I, I think we know who the crowd favors I know. in the first I match. I think so. And, you know, and Jay Washington, of course, Janine the Machine. And Jay's going to be busy tonight. Jay's got two matches. He's got Janine and Chance because this is a big match for Janine, but Chance going to be trouble. He goes 0-2 here, then he's going to write into the team's division. We might not see him in singles. Again. That's right. Jay going to be a busy man tonight. Jay not only managing Janine, then he's doing a set at LOL Comedy Club right. in Times Square. Then he's coming back here to be a manager for Ethan. They have some interesting chemistry, but Ethan Irwin may be facing his biggest challenge as a belt holder. And some guy, I forget I've his I've heard of him. His uh, name is Dangerous Dan, Dan Merle. Merle. That's who it is. That's who it is. This is a match. This is a heavyweight title match. Jeez, every, you guys walked in today, and I saw a lot of you, and, I, and this was the reaction from everybody, every single person. Who you got in the main event? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to touch it, right? I was like, I'm not asking for money. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, but, they, but the two of them, because they're so good, Ethan, 7-1. and one has beaten Dan Merle, has beaten John Roca, has beaten Drew McWeeny. Uh, I mean, there's so many people that he has beaten. And then you got Dan Merle, who's a legend. This could be the third time he wins the championship if he does it tonight. It, it's, it's historic, and I'm glad the live stream's going to see it. I'm glad you guys are going to see it. I'm pumped. Like so, we said, all over the world, man. The world is watching us I right know. now. You could be in China. You could be in Sweden. You could be in Phoenix, where I'm going to be doing stand-up February 1st. There's so many places. It's good that are watching us right now. It's an exciting event. And again, we're in your hometown. Yeah. I'm and now we're about to get this thing started. Ready to get it started. And one last thing. So if you watch the awards, maybe you didn't watch the awards. but Oh, it, it was great. You should watch it. It was good. It was a good. Great it was host. Really good. Great host. It was really good. So there's something that I, want, that I said if you watch the awards, and I'm going to make true to that tonight. So I told Andrew Guy. I told Andrew Guy. I told him that if he did not behave at the awards, there was going to be a consequence. Tonight, at the end of the event... I am going to tell you my consequence and what is the fate of Andrew Guy at the end of tonight's event. But that's not why we're here. We're here to watch the matches now. So guess what? Let's get ready to schmo down. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two big matches tonight. Welcome to the movie trivia showdown. And Mark, we're starting here in the singles division. We have Chance Ellison and Janine the Machines. That's right, Christian. We have uh, two great competitors. We're looking at our match notes right now. Yeah. And uh, this match brought to you by Apple. Not really. <laughs> And as you look at the landscape of this match, I mean, Janine comes in, Chance comes in. There's been a little bit of trash talk between the two. Right. They've kept it classy for the most part, but it's a matchup of entertaining managers. But once you get down to that white hot spotlight, your managers can't help you. Your friends can't help you. It's just you and your ability to answer trivia questions in a pretty intimidating environment. Yeah, and I don't know how, how cordial it's been. I think Chance and Janine have been talking some serious smack on each other in the movie trivia show on Facebook group. They've been going after each other. Janine has no problem calling 
calling Chance overrated. And, and Chance, Chance comes back at her and says she shouldn't be here in the first place. So there, there's some bad blood there, too, for sure. And then you got corruption. God knows what those idiots are going to do. So um, <laughs> it's going to be something. But I do want to show everybody here a little bit of how we got here. Here we go. We have a brand new rookie joining the league, Janine the Machine versus Bonnie Somerville. So we're going to sudden wow. death. A day to remember? A oh, lot to sorry. remember. And you're winner! Who is next? I'm about to end your fight for life. Gangs of New York. And <laughs> you're winner! The Machine wants to take on the android. Two, one, and you're winner! Janine got screwed out of this. The gauntlet matches. The machine goes up against Ben the Boss Bateman. Travolta and Sam Jackson. And your winner! I feel like I made a name for myself this season. Chance Ellison. Who the hell is this? Who the hell is this? Who the hell's Chance Ellison? What about this guy right here? Who's coming for Chance Ellison already? The mumbo see dumbo elephant. Chance Ellison to me, he's the real deal. He's definitely an up and comer to keep an eye on. And your Chance Ellison experiencing something he's never had before, a loss. This is now a titan of the game and really showing what he's capable of. Chance Ellison, the Cobra, is ready. This is going to be a big upset if Ellison can do it. Elvis. And your winner! Do not sleep on this kid. He's going to be a force to be reckoned. We are not done till we say we're done. Chance Ellison versus the machine. I'm not intimidated. Not one damn bit. Janine the Machine about to shut this thing down. And there's only two things you can do about it. Nothing and deal with it. Damn it. Boy, oh boy. Did that promo make gas station sunglasses look good? <laughs> nice. I like what you did there. Um, before we get started here, too, I'd like to thank both Live U, the reason we're streaming here tonight for Live U. Give it up for Live U. Very excited to be working with them to bring everybody the movie trivia Shmona and our new, the, we are doing a lot of audio this year. You can listen to all your matches. You want to be at the gym. You want to be just in your car listening to the Go movie Go to the trivia gym. Shmona. It's January. Definitely do that. And while you are there in January, check out, we are going to be on Himalaya. That is where the audio can be found. Himalaya is our new audio sponsor. Thank you so much, Himalaya, for being with us. We love Himalaya. Thank you. You get to hear this sweet voice on Himalaya. We do, but my, uh, Mike, hello, Mike, how are you? My uh, name is Mark. We've worked together for over a decade. I rewrote that. <laughs> well, Mark. Yes, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Only my family calls me that, you son of a rat. <laughs> We are now getting into this thing, and as you see, there's, they, they both have a lot of attitude. They, they want to prove themselves. They are the young blood, and they want to make a name for themselves. They're in New York here. They want to, because if they can steal the show, if they can have a respectable victory here, people are going to remember it going into the season premiere of season six. Yeah, and it's a totally different ballgame when you talk about doing a live event from being in our studio, because our studio from Cincinnati, Ohio, is where we tape our broadcast. Now you have to fly from there. You have to deal with travel. You have to deal with all these things that you're not used to dealing with in a match and then on top of that you have hungry wolves of an audience right. that are rabid fans they're excited to see you you have to put all of that away to the side and just focus on what the hell you and I are asking them in that particular moment all right so as we are getting ready to go here some of the notable notable accomplishments first you have the Janine the machine she Narrowly lost to Collider Collision Triple Threat. She started off 2-0. She's beaten Bonnie Somerville and Emma Fife, and she was a 2018 Rookie of the Year nominee. And then you get Chance, Chance Ellison. He, def he, he defeated both Dan Merle and John Roca in a team match. He took Ethan Irwin, Ethan Irwin, Ethan Irwin to the last question in his debut match. Then those, both of those accomplishments, a lot of stuff. There's a, there's a good chance that we're going to see a new superstar emerge here. And tonight. Chance Elson, he lost to Bonnie Somerville, is that correct? They never played more. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Oh, nice. Good. So what are you trying to do, get dates? I'm just All saying right. hi. All right. So with that, my friend, are you ready? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> then how about this? Say it with me, New York. It's time for the movie trivia Shmoda. Time to slow down. Time to slow down. <laughs> Let's get our first competitor right there. Later 
Kingdom Champion is here, Mike Kalinowski is here. Ken Knapsack is here too, and the crowd is letting them hear it. There's Chance, he's waving, there's a lot of booze here, and look at Ken firing up the audience. Look at Ken, Ken is yelling at them, Mike walking in, and Chance Ellison. You look gotta think that Chance is getting a lot of confidence yeah. from being a part look at, look of the Look at Ken firing up the kid. He's firing up the kid. He looks like an angry biker in yeah. Sons of Anarchy. And now we see Chance Ellison, Ken Knapsack, the champ. Make your way to the ring there, Chance. Chance is going. Chance. All right, guys. They're hitting the stage there. Look at them just milking it around. Milking it up. Rubbing the belt in the face of the front row. Yeah, look. Yeah, he wants to go. And Napsok not shaking a lot of hands. Right. Almost yeah. intimidating the crowd. Well, that's what he's doing. I mean, look, Ken, that's what Ken's doing. Yo, oh, he's, he's found one gentleman. Yeah, look, Ken's going after somebody. There's a little bit of smack talk here. Yeah. Christian, back and forth. Wow. And, and there's the energy. Look at this. I mean, they I really. I'll tell you, for the way it ended for them, it's spectacular. Look at you. Yeah. Okay, so all of a sudden, all of a, you got a big, you got a big mouth. You got a big mouth, don't you? All right. Uh, what do you want, one of those? Oh, would you like? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Why not? It's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, sheep. <laughs> What's up there? Oh, yeah. Look at them all there. New York City. I got to say, I've been here 24 hours. New York City. This place stinks. Oh, boo. The first place we come out of beautiful Los Angeles is to this dump. And everyone's like, Mike, Mike, you gotta try, you gotta try a bagel when you're there, Mike. You gotta try a bagel. It's the water, makes it great. They stink. <laughs> and last night I'm out trying to enjoy the town. Mike, Mike, you gotta have pizza. You gotta have a pizza in New York. You, you don't live until you have the pizza here. It stinks. Don't worry, I'm gonna go back to LA and have some Papa John's. Oh, boo! You know what? And then I walk around. You leave your trash on the sidewalks. It's so fitting because we're here with the machine. She's broken. And I know what you guys do with stuff that's broken. You throw it on the trash on the sidewalk. So in a few hours, you'll be able to take pictures with her outside. The trash. But no, you know what? As you guys know, I could talk about myself all day long. But we're not here for me. Mr. Knapsack, what do you got to say about this man right here? The Cobra! Some great philosophers from the ancient days once said, we shall not sleep until we reach our, our location of Brooklyn. And if you are here in Brooklyn tonight or you're watching at home, do not sleep for you are part of history tonight. The movie Trivia Schmodown is launching season six and this is all about reaching the next level. And to ain't no one paid money to see you tonight. Here's the thing. Here's the situation. In a few moments, someone's going to come to this arena to compete, and it is an amazing story. A year ago, she was just like all of you, a fan. She was watching, she was cheering, she was booing, she was like you, but unlike you, she got off her couch and did something about it. <laughs> and it is a Cinderella story. She's a talented artist. She is a vibrant personality. She knows movie trivia. If she wins tonight, she moves to the next level. It'd be a Hollywood ending for that Cinderella story, but this ain't Hollywood, kids. This is the movie trivia schmodown, and dreams are broken here tonight because this is about chance and truth and destiny. So come on down and face your end. Let's give it up. Bring out Janine. Bring out Janine.
driving right along. They're ready. They're ready for it. Game the machine. And she is psyched. She is ready. This is one of our first trips here in New York. What is she going to do? They're waiting for her. Where is she? Where is she? The crowd craving. And there she is. It's Jay Washington. Jay Washington getting a pop here. Corruption has made the crowd shake. Cheer Jay Washington. And look at that. Like a boxer. Yeah, she's coming in green style. The crowd is up. The crowd is up for Janine the Machine. Oh my goodness. Look at the machine and look at Jay Washington. Big smile on his face, pulling his competitor closer and closer to the arena. Again, all sorts of cheers ready. Yeah. He has the look of a prize. And Jay taunting. Look at Jay taunting corruption. And Janine's heading to the ring now. Janine's going to the pumps to the crowd. Watch the stare off. There you go. The crowd is going nuts for Janine the Machine. And let's see what these guys do. They're the stare off. They're a cunt. They're a cunt. Face to face they go. Face to face they go. You can kill that. New York City makes some noise! of the movie trivia Smodown, and what do we have here? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be respectful and give a lot of props because it took a long way to get him here all the way from Los Angeles. It's the James Bond wannabe. <laughs> Factually true. We know you're hungry. We'll get to you later. Then, <laughs> along with them, straight out of the Death Star, they cut him out of a tauntaun and brought him out of a retirement home. Ken Napsok! He played the age card and the good. tauntaun card. He did it good. Oh, they deserve these shots, don't they? And last but least, last but certainly least, Somebody who couldn't be hard even if it was a wet dream. Somebody who couldn't even be tough if it was old underwear. When it's all said and done, we donating your loss just like them jackets to Goodwill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for not a chance in hell. And with that, Back and forth they go with the jabs. I don't think you realize what this is, son. I don't think you get it. You got lucky to get hit crawling on their backs. I think you real happy and real excited. And that's cute. That's cute. But guess what your record is? You don't know it because it ain't good. All right. This ain't about me. This for damn sure ain't about you. This is about y'all and Janine the Machine. So ladies and gentlemen, everybody in New York City, if you're watching on live stream all around the world, Janine about to put a hurting on this boy. And for those who know me, know this. It's only two things you can do about it. That's nothing and deal with it. Damn it. There you go. Jay Washington coming in hot and face to face they go. Oh boy. All right. Oh boy. And they back up, They're back up. Right Introducing first, representing Corruption with a record of no wins, one defeat. He is the 2018 Ultimate Schmodown Team Semi-Finalist. 2018 Rookie of the Year nominee, he is the Cobra, Chance Allison. Opponents representing the Viper Squad with a record of two wins, two defeats, and one knockout. 2018 Rookie of the Year nominee, Johnny the Machine. All right, take a seat, competitors. Take a 
a seat at the table. We heard a shower of booze for yep. Chance, and half the crowd stood up just hearing Janine's name. That's how excited they are to see one of their well, favorite Well, corruption deserved it there. Corruption came out, riled him up. Jay came out and really supported his competitor. Ken and Janine here we right go. with gloves on. Well, we are ready to get going. She's taking the gloves off. The gloves off. are off. The gloves are off. So, Mark, we are about to get going. Our competitors have sat down. What are the rules of round number one? In round number one, the field of two competitors will hear eight questions from eight different movie trivia categories. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. I will remind each competitor that you have three usages of the JTE rule. Throughout the duration of the match, if you're not sure you heard a question right, you need to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. Each competitor also has one challenge to be used throughout the duration of the match. And because this is a live event, it's not just us and them in a studio. There's fans here, and we love fans. We love your support. We love your cheers. We love your booze. But please, for the love of all things holy, do not say what you think could be the correct answer once you hear a question. Do not shout it. Do not say it. Do not whisper it to your friend next to you. Do not think of any answers for the next two hours for both matches, or else you will be immediately ejected from the arena by our personal head of security, BC. He's looking to throw someone out, too. So. That's right. Why do they call him BC? Because he has caveman strength. Oh, all right. All right, so with that, Chance, are you ready? <laughs> Let's get it. Janine, are you ready? Let's do this. Then let's get ready to schmoot out! All right, round number one. Question number one comes in the realm of action adventure. Here we go, guys. Who directed 1986's Top Gun? A movie that came out before both competitors were born. I thought you had to stop writing questions. I, <laughs> this is a great question. It is a good question. It's an Five, great movie. Four. Got a sequel coming three, out. Two, one, pens down, Chance. Tony Scott. Yes, Janine. Tony Scott. There you go, one, 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 one. Next question, Mark. Your next question is in the world of new releases. And your query is, who plays Agent Burns in Bumblebee? I like that Bumblebee, I gotta tell you. It's adorable. It's, it's you know. a good movie, I don't know, yeah. it's adorable. I think it's just a good movie. He's an adorable little, he transforms into. All right, I'll give it to you. Five, four. Three. Got those eyes. Two, I'm, I'm counting. One, Janine. John Cena. Yep, and Chance. John Cena. Tie game. Here's the third question. Dramas, dramas, had a lot of that before. Who played Clemente Krasinski, the object of Joel's affection in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? I did not write this one. Uh, you love that movie love because it. you have many ex-girlfriends, is that correct? Some are here tonight. Hi. Five, four. <laughs> Quick count there. Three, huh? <laughs> yeah. Two, one. Pens down, please, and chance. Kate Winslet. Yep. Janine. Kate Winslet. Tie game. Look at this. Back and forth they, they go. Their stuff. Back and forth they go. Your next category. Is my ex-girlfriend here? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Three fans are letting the, letting the scoreboard know. I love that the fans, Wake up. The fans actually, fans yelling at the scoreboard. Right. That's fun. Your next question comes from the world of animated movies. These are movies drawn by hand or more likely on a computer. And your question is, which Pixar film stars the vocal talents of Michael Keaton, Ned Beatty, and Tom Hanks? You put me in that, you know what you got? A golf foursome. For the ages. I liked your jokes last night. Five. Thanks for coming this to the show. This is good, too. This is good. Four, three, two, <laughs> one. Pens down, please. Ginny, and I like the show. Toy Story 3. Yes, it is. Chance. Toy Story 3. Tie. Game. Four. Four. Okay. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Who played Hades, god of the underworld, in 2010's Stinkbox Clash of the Titans? You're not supposed to judge the movies. I'm when not, you I can do it. I don't think I'm, I... Uh, I'm back home. I don't think I saw that. Five, four, you're lucky. Three, two, one, pens down. Chance. Ray Fiennes. Yep, Janine. Liam Neeson. Didn't have it. All right, so Chance takes his first lead. Chance takes his first lead there. All right, Mark. Chance draws first blood. Yep. Your next question comes from the category of comedies. <laughs> 
And your question is, actress, writer, Nia Vardalos played Tula Portacalos in this semi-autobiographical 2002 romantic comedy about her large family. Title of the picture. Five, four, three, two, one. Janine. My big fat Greek wedding. Yep, Chance. My big fat Greek wedding. Chance has not missed. <laughs> chance, six, I'll tell you six, what. five. Six, you know, five for Chance. Chance has the lead. He has not missed a question yet. Janine is winning all the penmanship points right Easily. now. Easily. All right, Chance is trying. Horror slash thriller for question seven. Which 2015 holiday film was directed by Michael Doherty and starred Adam Scott? I think you notice in round one the question's starting to get a little tougher. Yeah. Open with some. Five, four, three, two, one. Chance. Krampus. Krampus is it. And Janine. Krampus. Janine right there, toe to toe. Chance has not missed. Janine's only missed once. Here you go for your final question in this round, Mark. Your final question is a Patreon question. The following question you comes from John Patterson. Thank you, John. John Patterson, thank you for all your support. If you want to go to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon and check it out, select which tier is right for you today. John Patterson, supporting the show, wanted a question in the category of the 2000s. This is the decade of the 2000s, and we kick off with the first year in that decade. In the 2000 film Gone in 60 Seconds, what code system does the crew use to identify particular cars? Chance hits this, then he will have a perfect round. But if he misses and Janine can hit it, then they'll be tied up. Five, four, three, two, one. Janine? Women's names? That's correct, Chance. Chance missed it. Tie game. Tie game. The perfect round doesn't happen. The machine comes back and takes the crowd with her. Look at that, 7-7 seven, seven at the end of round number one. And the crowd is going for Janine right now, Mark. 7-7, seven to seven. what a matchup we have. And now we are about to enter round number two. Round number two is known as the wheel round. It's the wheel of doom, fate, and for one competitor, justice. Unfortunately, for some reason, Copster declined to carry the wheel onto the plane. So we have an electronic wheel we're going to spin. Before we get to that wheel, I would like to mention that the wheel for today's match is a sponsored wheel by one of our loyal Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon members, Reefton. Give him a hand. Reefton sponsoring it. And the sponsored slices on the wheel are the 2000s and the category of Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. So both Jay and Kalinowski come out here giving some. Talking so some there's the wheel. There. All right. So, because Janine, you are the higher ranked competitor. Janine, would you like to spin first or second? Janine. Um, babies first. Babies first, all right. Chance Ellison. All right, so let's give it a spin for Chance. Look at that There's thing go. Spin. Round and round. Meryl Street, Meryl Street, Meryl Street. They love Meryl. Romantic comedies, you want to spin again? Spin again. Spin it again. Romantic comedies wow, it is. okay. Romantic comedies it is, okay. So romantic comedies, you're gonna have four questions in the realm of romantic comedies for Chance Ellison. That's right, and I'll remind each competitor that in round number two, you do hear four questions, like Christian said. Your question value is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, competitors, stealing is available in round number two. We approve of theft in this one instance. All right, so Chance has all his JT rules left, as so does Janine. Both have challenges left. All right, here you go, Chance. Four questions in the realm of rom-coms. In the film, while you were sleeping, what is Sandra Bullock's character's job? Multiple choice. Multiple choice. A, nurse. B, businesswoman. C, reporter. D, token collector. That's incorrect. The steal for one point. Token. Collector. That's correct. One point steal for the machine. One of her strengths is romantic comedies. You gotta wonder how big of a factor stealing is gonna be. All right, Janine. Here's question number two. Name the actress that played Emily's mother. Excuse me, Chance. Name the actor that played actress. Name the actress that played Emily's mother in The Big Sick. Five, 
four, three, two. Holly Hunter. Correct for two points. Wow. Big point for Chance. Pulling that one out of that nowhere. good. All right, Chance, here you go. Chance, who played Andrew's mother, Grace Paxton, in 2009's The Proposal? Five, four, three, two. Betty White. That's incorrect for the steal. Janine, two point steal if you get it. Five, four, three, two, one. Didn't have any answers. Mary Steenberger. Okay. All right, so with that, we have one more, one more. Oh, yeah, one more, excuse me. Okay, one more. Here we go. All right, last question, Chance. I apologize. Here you go. In the film 13 Going on 30. It's a beloved classic. Yes. What color is the house that Matt and Jenna live in? at the end of the film. <sighs> Struggling with this count. Five, four, three. Mumble choice. A, pink, B, white, C, blue, D, brown. Five, four, three, two. Pink. Correct for one point. <laughs> All right, so. Ah, oh, but ain't that America. So there you go. So now we get to Janine the Machine, who will have her chance to spin the wheel as the wheel hits. Jay, you got to go. Jay, Jay, you got to step back, Jay. All right, here we go. There goes the wheel. Romantic comedy is no longer in the picture for Janine. No. Leonardo DiCaprio films. No, she doesn't want it. Spin again. Spinning away from Leo. Sorry, Reef Ton. And it's laying on. Can't have it. Got to spin again. Can't take romantic comedies there. She would have loved that spin. Oh, yeah. But I know it, it's, but it seemed to do well with four. And it goes away. Now it is the 2000s. The 2000s. All right, 2000s for Janine the Machine, right. who is looking to have a good round here. Because... All right, here we go. 2000s. All right, Janine. The world of 2000s, a decade that was good for me personally, not professionally. In the film Revolutionary Road, Frank and April Wheeler plan to leave their dull suburban lives behind to move to what European city? Multiple choice. Is it A, Paris, B, London, C, Venice, or D, Barcelona? Paris. Give her a point. A guessing machine. Fun fact, all four of those cities currently watching us. Right. Your next question, Janine. Who directed the 2006 comedy, Idiocracy? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Mike Judge, B, Judd Apatow, C, Harold Ramis, D, Adam McKay. Mike Judge. Another point for Janine. We're halfway through round number two for you. Your penultimate question in this round. Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman play a young couple who are terrorized by three masked assailants over the course of an evening at a remote summer home in what film? Strangers. Can't, do it. Can't accept that answer, unfortunately. The it Strangers. Is, it is The Strangers. It is The Strangers. Two point steal. Yeah. And they go nuts. 12 10. Are you challenging it? You can. You bet. You can challenge it all you want. The rule. He, oh, he would have gotten that. He would have gotten that. Just go. Are you challenging it? All right, good. Quiet. Let's get. So, our special judge. Our special judge for today for the challenge, none other than half of the team champions, Rachel the Crusher Boucher! There's Rachel.
You know, Rachel Cushing adding a, uh, a sense of class here. We color coordinated our various outfits. Uh, we have discussed in the off season between season five and six some rulings in the movie trivia showdown. One of which is if you have a movie title and it begins with an article such as the, a, by, and that you need to include that article, especially if it's a two word answer, such as These Strangers or The Thing. Having said that, this was an internal discussion and has not been made public to all Schmodown competitors. Some are aware, some are not. That's on us, and for that reason, we do have to rule this question by last year's and previous year's rules. So Janine gets the point. Janine's gonna get the two points. So we're at 12, 10? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. All right, so Mark, next question. All right. Your last question in what has become a lengthy round two. Your last question, Gene, again, this is the world of the 2000s, that's a category, is what was the first completely CGI animated movie in the Disney canon that was created without the help of Pixar Studios? a chance smugly laughing multiple choice is it a chicken little is it b bolt c meet the robinsons or d dinosaur meet the robinsons it is not meet the robinsons for the steel chance dinosaur for it is dinosaur point. for one point so chance gets himself right back in it yeah 12 11 yep. what a battle we have between janine the machine and chance ellison final round three begins here we go, Mark. How does round three work for those watching? In round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers that range from 1 to 20. Those numbers correspond to a different corner of the movie trivia Schmodown Galaxy. The first question asked to you is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. The last one, should we make it that far, is worth five points. Because Janine enjoys a one-point advantage over Chance, Janine, you're going to give us your three numbers first, and then we'll get three different numbers from Chance. So, Janine, when you're ready, your numbers. Three, six, and nine. Three, six, and nine. Chance. Eight, 12, 18. Eight, 12, and 18. All right, Chance, it is 12, 11. You will go first to answer your two-pointer. All right, Chance, so you chose number eight. Number eight, Chance, give me a second here. So number eight, number eight. All right, here we go, Chance. In the category of crime, okay. in the category of crime, who plays K. Adams Corleone in the Godfather series? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Who plays K. Adams Corleone in the Godfather series? Five, four, three. Is that like a sheer? The answer is Diane Keaton. Uh, Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton. All right, so Chance misses there, but he still has a chance to take the lead here with category number category number 12. Category number 12. Julia Roberts. Hey, you Julia know her. Roberts. He knows Julia Good Roberts. Good friend of mine. She looked very happy to be in that picture. Yeah. All right. Chance, mm -hmm. who stars as Dan? An unsuccessful writer caught in a love triangle between Julia Roberts and Natalie Portman in 2004's Closer. Jude Law. That's correct for three points. That's correct for three points. So now it jumps up. It is now 14 to 12. And Janine has a chance to tie it with her two-pointer, which is category number three. And that corresponds to the world of comedy once again. <laughs> Janine, for two points, your question in Dodgeball, a true underdog story. In Dodgeball, name one of the actors that play the hilarious announcers Cotton McKnight and Pepper Brooks during the tournament. Jason Bateman. That is there Jason Bateman. So it's tied up. So Janine, we're going to stick with Janine on the three-pointer here. It is tied up. Janine's going to go for her three-pointer. Janine, your three-pointer, you selected number six. And up here, that corresponds to the world, you just can't escape it, the 2000s. So your question is, who plays the TV news cameraman Sandra Bullock becomes obsessed with after a single date in 2009's All About Steve? Oh, 
Bradley Cooper. There you go, Bradley Machine Cooper. Take. All right. And that movie's terrible. Well, here is the Not position we are in now. Here is the position we are in now. Chance Ellison has his five-pointer. If he hits it, he will go in the lead and force Janine to win. However, if he misses it, Janine the Machine will win the game. And we have category number 18 for Chance. Category number 18 for Chance. And Chance, that would be in the realm of romance. Oh. That's nice. Here you go. Here you go, Chance. Five points to stay in this thing. Name all of the three Richard Linklater ro romantic dramas starring Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. Give you 20 seconds. For 20 this. seconds. Can I say the subtitles or do you need the whole title? We need the whole, whole title. title. Okay. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one, name all of the three Richard, Richard Linklater romantic dramas starring Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Last one, name all of the three Richard Linklater romantic dramas starring Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. Before sunrise, before sunset, before midnight. That's correct! Chance Ellison does it and forces Janine to hit this one here, this 1917. So coming down to this, if Janine hits it, she wins the game. If she misses, Chance Ellison will win. What a battle so far. Here you go, Mark. So she chose, she has all three of her JTE rules left. She chose category number nine. She chose category number nine, Christian. And that corresponds up here to the world of comic book movies. Yeah. Comic book movies. Janine, your question for five points and the victory. In X-Men Apocalypse. Oh, uh, is the right answer. <laughs> in X-Men Apocalypse, what two mutants face off in an underground cage match in Berlin? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. In X Men. First one, first one. In X Men Apocalypse, what two mutants face off in an underground cage match in Berlin? First G. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. In X Men Apocalypse, what two mutants face off in an underground cage match in Berlin? Five, four. Angel. Three. And. Two. Mystique. And your winner, the Cobra Chance Allison. What was it? Angel and Nightcrawler. Angel and Nightcrawler. Angel, Angel, and, Angel and, and Nightcrawler. Angel and Nightcrawler. And with that corruption, narrowly narrowly escapes. That's a, that's a tough one. Narrowly escapes. Janine the Machine fought her hard out and had a battle, but a man, it was that pull at the end there, the Linklater question. And tough that, Linklater question going back to a tough X-Men Apocalypse question. Uh, she had Angel. She did not have the Nightcrawler part of it. We needed both. Unfortunately, Janine takes the L. Chance takes the W. And here, with an exclusive interview with the winner and the loser, how about a hand for Jen, Jen Sturger? Sturger. My heart is still beating through my dress. I'm so glad I wore a bra and underwear because I had no idea I was gonna be on stage. Thanks for the heads up, Christian. Oh my God. Um, so, I mean, now you're one and one. I mean, the level of opponents that you've had to face, I think 
Is it fair to say you are living up to the sensation that you've created around yourself? Oh, I say it's 100% true. I'm living up to the expectation I set for myself. 100%, it is true. I am living up to that expectation. You know, you came into this league and you had some stumbles, you know, in the beginning, but I feel like you're starting to get your stride, especially now in front of a live crowd in Brooklyn, New York. What was the energy like during that match? I saw you kind of beating yourself up a little bit at the end of the first round, and then the second round, obviously, when Janine got that steal. I mean, there was just a roller coaster of emotions you took us on, including that third round. Yeah, I mean, middle of the match, but like things were going away. Rom comes, I mean, it's not something I'm super strong at. I know she was. And I had no choice but to take that, because I got the same thing twice. I, I want to say the wheel is rigged, but you know what? It doesn't matter, because I got the W in the end anyways. Ken? I know you're, you were jazzed up over here. Mike, you were dancing around with your belt. It was embarrassing for all of us. <laughs> <sighs> Ken, how are you feeling after this victory? Are you feeling it's giving you guys a little bit of gas? I mean, I know Kalinowski's got the belt right now, and congratulations again, sir. Thanks, Jeff. Well deserved. <sighs> Sad to say. Um, <laughs> but how are you feeling now about corruption, obviously, with the, with the turn of events at the end of last season and then tonight? Well, first of all, Jennifer, uh, I'm eating food in New York, so I always have gas. Let's make that clear. Um, all right. Chance did have some stumbles early on. We're very honest about that. When we, we took the plane out here, we knew what had happened, and we had to get that out of his head. I always believe you can get strike one, you can get strike two, but strike three is on you. You have to finish the at-bat, and that's what this was about tonight. Janine the Machine and Chance are part of the future of this league. I, we will never take anything away from Janine, what she did tonight. We will never take away anything what she did tonight. But I've always said, the movie Trivia Schmodown is not about the storylines ending all happy and fluffy like a cake at a wedding. It is about truth. It is about destiny. And that's what this was about tonight. Congratulations again, Chance. All right, so Chance now, Ellison, everybody. Chance Ellison. And now you get Janine the Machine coming in. Mm -hmm. Janine the Machine, Jay Washington. Well deserved. Uh, well deserved. Well deserved. Round of applause well deserved. She fought her hard out. She fought her hard out. Well-deserved honor Fought right here. heart out. One over the crowd, became yeah. a baby face like that. Oh, Janine, that obviously didn't go the way you thought it would. Um, we still love you. Love you. Look, <laughs> bottom line, you are one of the hardest working women, let alone competitors in this league. You know, you bring it every single time. The fans absolutely love you. That had to have been crushing at the end for you. What's going through your head right now? It was tough. I did my best. But I'm proud to say that I don't remember shit about that terrible movie. <laughs> None of us do. Um, he played fine, you know. But I showed some people I know that I can do this. <laughs> and I'm a machine, and I'm not gonna stop. Absolutely. And Jay Washington, I mean, aside from your dancing moves, et cetera, I feel like, uh, you know, this has been a, a new you lately. What's going on? First off, giving honor to God who's ahead of my life. I mean, I'm just happy about a lot of great things. I mean, you're going to see the movie Trivia Smowdown singles champion in a minute who's going to keep his belt, so. But that's not the point, though. The point is, I'm happy because this woman came up here and gave her all and damn near beat dude and lost to one of the worst goddamn movies ever created. I'm almost losing my voice, but I'm going to say this. For anybody in this room and anybody watching, if you thought she was going to get knocked out and beat, you clearly have not been watching this game. If you thought she didn't have a chance, you clearly ain't been watching this game. And if you thought she should know X-Men Apocalypse, then you have a horrible goddamn taste in movies. Because everybody saw me... Everybody saw me was like, comic book movies, yes! X-Men Apocalypse, shit! <laughs> like, but at the end of the day, uh, Jen, 
never, because I want to call you Jessica so bad. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a loss, but her record is still better than his. So, no matter what, this is a small little stepping stone, a small hurdle. If it comes down to X-Men Apocalypse, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, or a bunch of other horrible ass movies, Spider-Man 3 that nobody wants to watch, we will take that loss. Jay, you did such a great job, and I know that this lady means so much to you with all the prepping you guys were doing backstage. You have another match coming up in just a few minutes. How's Ethan feeling right now? Uh, he pumped, and uh, I ain't never seen Let me tell you something real quick. I watched this man go... <laughs> yeah, it depends on how much time I got. Uh, I've watched this man do matches and not prepare, prepare at all and not care. This is a match he went into and he studied. Do you understand how dangerous that makes that man? Back to you guys at the desk. All right, thank you, Jen Sturger. Thank you once again to Chance Elson and Janine the Machine. What a great first fight. It really what was. What a great match, man. Uh, the, the, the crowd appreciative of both competitors, and that's yeah. what we like to see, as much smack talk as went on between the two, for them to at least acknowledge that it was a well-played match. And as somebody, look, it's tough when you lose on a question of a movie you're not a fan of. I know that because I've lost on the answer being Nickelback before. You have. <laughs> I was there. It's true. Um, right next to me. Well, yeah, and like you said, what a great battle. They both in New York, live, people watching, like you said, all over the world, and they just came, they showed up. And, and the way that that battle was played, that seemed like the two competitors have been playing for years. I was very impressed with both of it, and they deserved the accolades that the crowd gave them. They, they, they certainly yeah. did that, and uh, what a way to say goodbye to New York. Uh, you want to get a no, beer? It's not it yet. But as right before we go into our championship no. match, there's two things I want to do. I told you about the fate of Andrew Guy, and that's going to come up in a little bit. There's one other thing that I did not tell you guys about, and that is, at the end of the spectacular last year, Emma Fife became the commissioner. And now the question was, of what? Emma Fife is the commissioner of the teams and inner geekdom division. She will be the... Fitting deservant of yeah. that honor. She will be doing all of that. She, but the question now remains, who do you get for commissioner of the singles division? Who wants to be the commissioner of this? Who wants to get all the, I mean, I'm not doing it again. I ain't doing it. Uh, and it's it, it, all, because of all the uh, it, it, people, you got to worry about the Andrew guys. You got to worry about the John Rokas. You got to worry about all these people, these big egomaniacs who want the next title shot barging into the office all the time. Who can handle it? Who's got the respect? That person is here right now. I am going to introduce to you right now the new singles commissioner of season six, the inglorious one, Sam Love. There's the former champion, the former champion, two time champion, former team champion, double champion, Sam Levine, the commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. And as you saw, voted 2018 Schmodown Player of the Year and 17. Sam, thank wh you. Why would you do this to yourself? Why would you do this to yourself? Thank you. Uh, here, here's why I want to do this. Um, like you said, it's a thankless job. It really is. It it's going to be. It's going to be nothing but pressure. So frankly, I am just in it for the money. Um, which reminds me, what are the tax implications of a zero-dollar salary? <laughs> Beneficial. Beneficial. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, I'm in it because I love the Schmodown like you love the Schmodown. And for God's sake, somebody needed to step in and do something. <laughs> We can't have nonsense like that. <laughs> strangers, the strangers. No. Rules will be made. They will be followed. And that is what I'm here for. I do have a couple questions for you, actually. Sure. What the hell is up with Andrew Guy? What, the, what are we going to do about that? I, I promise you by the end of tonight, we're going to have a solution. And, and 
you will know. You'll be here, so you're going to go yeah. into it knowing he's you're, you're, I'll, I'll make a mess, and you can yeah, clean it. Yeah, that's your last act it will. as and then, and commissioner, and I'll, and I'll is figuring back. out what the hell to do with that guy. Well, that's it. But listen, thank yeah. you. I'm glad to have you. We're glad to have you. Very happy But to I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah, You've got you? a big match coming up here right now between yeah. a guy you faced before in Dangerous Dan Merle, uh -huh. a guy that you've watched climb up the ranks and do uh, just incredible things in Ethan Unreal. Irwin. Who you got? I got the fans, Christian. Oh, yes, right. That's a good, good commissioner. commissioner. That's good, a very that's good, a good commissioner, commissioner right there. All right. Yeah. Good first yeah. job. It's a test. There it, it is. Test. All right. Well, listen. How about for your new singles commissioner, the glorious one, Sam Levine? Thank you, Sam. So good surprises here right away. All right. Right away, our surprises happening in season six. Sam well, Levine, get that one. AOL email ready because I got some storylines to pitch. All right. Well. Right away, look at that. We have Chance Ellison winning. You got Sam Levine, your new commissioner. And now it's time for the championship match between the challenger, Dangerous Dan Merle, and the champion, big time, Ethan Irwin. Oh, you, you said that inaccurately. You're oh. supposed to say it like this. It's time for the championship match between Dangerous Dan Merle and Ethan Irwin. All right. Yeah. Two titans of the game. You got Dan 10 and 4 and Ethan 7 and 1, and let's see how we got here. Here we go. And you're I've always said that uh, it doesn't matter who you are, the score starts at zero every match. The whole entire league should be afraid now. An angry Dan is a scary Dan. The Founding Fathers! One. Hands down, Dan. I did not get it written down in time. And you're so he's coming off a loss. Dan Merle has not played in the singles tournament before. This is big for him. And your winner! If you look at Ethan Irwin, it's a different kind of opponent to... Congratulations, Ethan. Paul Greengrass. And your winner! Dan Merle and Andrako will go right at it again. Princess Mononoke. And your winner! He is now in the spectacular in the number one contender match. Brendan Fraser. And what a battle, what a match. Dan Rose going to New York. Be ready, because I'm bringing my A game. Remember the name, Ethan Irwin. I believe that Ethan Irwin could be a potential champion. And your winner! I've got my eye on a few of these people. Oh, do you now? And your winner! This is a big test for Ethan, because Mark Andreco is that good. <laughs> Richard and Steven. And your winner! And now Ethan is back in his first singles match. There's a lot on the line here. Elvis. And your winner! Ethan's been calling Dan out for a while now, but whoever does win today will face the champion. South side with me. And your winner, big time Irwin! Ethan Irwin is in the main event, the big dance. Hogan versus Andre. Kevin Costner. And your Legend against the rookie sensation, Dan Merle versus Ethan Irwin. And we're going to put on a champion show. The battle for New York begins. Season six is going to be bigger and better than anything you've ever seen. Wow. You know, Christian, I gotta be honest with you, I'm watching that promo, and something I need to work on going forward is my and your winner face. Yeah. Because every time you say and your winner, I'm still looking at the computer to make sure the question's right. So every time he says and your winner, looking in the camera, I'm just like, yeah. I'm gonna work on that for you. That's like me most of the matches. So, <laughs> fine, you win. All right, Mark, I mean, here we go. Between this, this is like a heavyweight title fight. I'm really excited. Just as a fan of this game to watch it, here are some of the notable accomplishments for Dan Merle. He is the 2016 Player of the Year. He is the first player to ever win five games in a row. He is a two-time champion. He has victories over Sam Levine, John Roca, Mark Riley, Clark Wolf, and Mark Andreco, and you. And... Ethan Irwin, notable accomplishments, seven victories in his debut season. He had two three-game win streaks in one season. He is the 2018 Ultimate Schmodown winner. He is also the 2018 Rookie of the Year and the Singles Player of the Year. Victories over John Roca, Dan Merle, Clark Wolf, Drew McWeeney, and Lon Harris. And, and, Who? he's got Bob Downey's number in his cell yeah, phone. Yeah, he does, that's true. All right, and with that, are you ready to get going? Uh, yeah, I want to meet him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the move!
Movie Trivia Schmodown. Five rounds for the Movie Trivia Schmodown Championship of the World. First, the challenger. The crowd is on their feet. They all turn around to see that they're ready. They want to see him. They want to see him, and here he comes. There he is. Look at the box. There he is, all by himself. No horsemen tonight. No screen junkies. Just coming in by himself. Intimidating. That's the 2016 Merle Hudson. There he is. Representing Screen Junkies and the Five Horsemen. With a record of 10 wins, four defeats, and seven knockouts. He is the ranked number one contender, the reigning movie fights champion, and the former two-time movie trivia schmodown champion of the world. Dangerous Dan Morrow! And his opponent, accompanied by his manager, Jay Washington with a record of seven wins, one defeat with three knockouts. He is the 2018 Rookie of the Year, 2018 Singles Player of the Year, and the reigning, defending, undisputed movie trivia, Schmodown Champion of the World, Ethan. Big time, Irwin! There he is. Well intro, sir. Had to do it, New York, well baby. Well intro. New York, baby. Ethan Irwin showing the big time shirt. Jay Washington with his big time shirt. All right, and we have the champion take his seat, please. We'll take Ooh. the title over here. Oh, boy, we get to. I'll get that back in a second. Oh, Ethan's saying he's going to get it right back in a second. There Look we go. This thing. All right, so we are getting ready to sit down. The champion is sitting down. The challenger is sitting down, and we will get over round number one once again. Mark, how's that go? Yeah, give, give, give the voice a little rest here and let me take over. In round like number six one. Six frogs died in my throat. Each competitor 
is going to hear eight questions. These are questions asked to the field, and they come from eight different corners of the movie Trivia Schmodown Galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. Each competitor throughout the duration of the five-round championship match has three usages of the JTE rule. You're not sure you heard a question right, need to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule, and you also each have one challenge to be used at any time throughout the five-round match. All right, so with that, the champion, are you ready? Always be closer. The challenger, are you ready? I was born ready. Then let's get ready to schmodown! All right, here we go. Round number one, question number one. In the realm of comedies, <laughs> Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and Katherine Hahn play parents who decide to reclaim the holiday in what 2017 comedy? Energy in this room is insane. The crowd's about to explode. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Ethan. Uh, my handwriting continues to be awful. Bad Mom's Christmas. Bad Mom's Christmas. Dan. A Bad Mom's Christmas. That's correct. All Good right, so way. one, 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 one. All right. Your next question in the world of horror slash thriller. Horror thriller. What 2001 horror film stars Nicole Kidman, who lives with her darkened old family house with her two photosensitive children? Sounds like a night at the Ellis house. <laughs> Five, got the two little kids running four, around. Three. Don't I'm let them see the sun, you know? Two. I got you. You got to be strict. Point, pens down, and Dan. The others. Yes, sir. Ethan. The others. Tie game. Two, two. All right. We also would have accepted others. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Too soon. The category of animated, what is the name of the baboon in the Disney film The Lion King? Uh, you're going to cry when they remake that and you see the, you know, the thing happen again? Yes. It's going to be awful. Yeah. Five. It's going to be, I mean. Spoilers, dude. Four. I didn't say what it was. Three, two, one. Ethan. Rafiki. Yes, it is. Dan. Rafiki. Tie game. I knew this was going to happen. All right, gentlemen. Your next question comes from the world of the Oscars. That's the award show that has no host. <laughs> I thought it was going to be you. You didn't make the phone call, Ethan. In the world of the Oscars, which one of the following 1988 films was not nominated for Best Picture? So these are movies released in 1988. Which one was not nominated for Best Picture? Rain Man, Bull Durham, or Working Girl? Good question. We call that one a Skaliski special. It was a good special. Shout out to Chris Skaliski. Yeah, Chris Skaliski. How are you, buddy? Five. Head writer of the Schmodown. Four, three, two, one. Dan. Bull Durham? Yes, it is. Ethan. Bull Durham. Tie game. Four, four. I would have gone with Working Girl. Wow. OK. All right, next question here. All right, action adventure, gentlemen. Action adventure. What film from the year 2000 stars Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson? Wow. Wow. <laughs> it gets a wow from Christian Arlo. Wow. Not much emotionally moves you these days, but that one did. Wow. Five, four, three, two, one. Ethan Irwin. Shanghai Noon. You got it, Dan. Shanghai Noon. Tie game again. Five, 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 five. I mean, those two don't belong together anyway. And then they're in the Old West, too. Can you believe it? Uh, anyway, back to the questions at hand. In the world of new releases, fellas, new releases. In the film Black Klansman, who plays David Duke? Too soon. <laughs> five, four. Three, two, one. Dan? Topher Grace. Yes, Ethan? Ellis' is doppelganger, Topher Grace. <laughs> yes, we would have also accepted Mark Ellis. Yeah. So it is a tie game right away. All right, fantasy sci-fi, gentlemen. Fantasy sci-fi. Who directed War for the Planet of the Apes? You know, you talk about the all-time great trilogies. Yeah. 
Yeah, people should start saying the apes. I'm with it. You know? I'm with it. It's Five, four, three, two, one. Ethan. Rupert Wyatt. Incorrect. Dan? Matt Reeves. That's correct. Dan takes the lead. Dan takes wow. the lead. Dan takes the lead. Wyatt, of course, doing the first movie. That's right. All right, next question. Wow. Next question. Reminds one of the documentary Rocky IV when he cuts the rush. Now, if Dan gets this, if Dan hits it, he's got himself a perfect round. So here we go. All right, gentlemen, your last category in round number one. It is a Patreon question. The following comes to you from Jonathan Peck. Jonathan Peck, big fan of the Schmodown. Thank you for your support of the Patreon. Mr. Jonathan Peck, he wanted a question in the world of dramas, and boy, do we have some here today. Your question. Who played legendary filmmaker George Melies in 2011's Hugo? I'm going to pretend that you pronounced that right. I took French for three years in high school. I nailed it. Five, four, three, two, one. Dan for the perfect round. Ben Kingsley? Perfect round for Dan Merle. And Ethan Irwin. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley. Yeah, so ben it's 8-7. However, Dan Merle, Dan Merle, you don't have to write this one down, Dan. This is just for you. Bonus question. If you get it, you will have a one point, excuse me, you'll have a two point lead here. Here you go. Here's your bonus question. Who played Hamish Abernathy in the Hunger Games series? Woody Harrelson. One point, Dan Merle, 9-7, two point lead. The challenger has taken a two point lead going into round number two, a perfect round for the two time champ. Yeah, it's fun watching. Neither competitor really blinked. Ethan had a momentary brain Just fart with it. I mean, the guy directed another movie in that trilogy, right. so they know their stuff here today. And as we move into round two, once again, this is the wheel round. So each question is gonna be asked due to a spin from that our wheel. Again, it is not a physical wheel because Cody was too lazy to take the wheel on the plane. So we have the electronic wheel. Wow, too soon, too soon for you. And no, they're, they're booing you. They were booing. Oh, they were booing, booing me. you because you took a shot at Cody. I'm, Cops are okay. Don't make fun of me. My Cody. apologies to Chet Barney and his oh. huge fan base. Check out the Wanger Patreon. Yes. So in round number two, <laughs> they're going to hear four questions. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question, but remind, there is stealing in round number two. If you're not sure of an answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel. Because Dan Merle not only had a perfect round, he got the bonus question, he enjoys a two-point advantage. So, Dan, would you like to fake spin first or defer to Ethan? Does this wheel have digital pegs? No, you, you, know, you can't, spin, can't spin from the digital pegs. Cannot spin yeah, from the digital pegs. Get him. <laughs> and, yeah, get him. And also, just to let everyone know, the champion has a chance. The champions can decide whether they want spinners or opponents. Ethan opted to not have spinners and opponents. He did not want spinners Thank and God. opponents' choice. Yeah. And... While we wait for Dan to make his decision here, I do want to remind everybody that the wheel is sponsored. The wheel for today's match is sponsored by Mr. Jake Burnham. Give him a hand, Jake. Loyal Schmodown patron. His wheel slices are Stanley Kubrick films and Tom Hanks movies. So cool. thank you, Jake, yeah, you for go. those categories. And we also have a sponsored wheel slice on that very wheel, and that is Disney movies. Disney so movies. if they spin Disney movies, they keep it. We'll say the name of that patron. All right, and also, once again, thank you to Live U and to Himalaya for bringing us here tonight in New York. Thank you to both Himalaya and Live U. All right, All right Dan, what do you want to do? Dan. I will spin second. You're going to spin. <laughs> All right, he's spinning second. Ethan, this is your spin. Let's do it. Jody Foster. Jody Foster. I'll take it. So he's going to take Jody Foster. Take Jody Foster. All right. The crowd is divided on Jody Foster. All right. So, Jody Foster. Here we go. Jody Foster. Ethan, you need a four in the realm of Jody Foster. Where the hell is she? The crowd loves Meryl Streep, not so much yeah. Jody Foster. No. Why is that? Don't know. All right. Here you go. Ethan, in Elysium, who plays Agent Kruger, the loose cannon operative that will stop at nothing to retrieve the stolen data program? Charlotte Copley. Two points. Love that movie. Question two. Who stars as the adventurous young girl in 2008's Nims Island? Abigail Breslin. Two points. Deep cut. Woo. Okay. What Lord of the Rings actor stars as the pilot trying to solve the mystery of the missing girl in 2005's Flight Plan? 
Sean Bean. Two points. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. Ethan, last one. How many films have Jodie Foster and Mel Gibson collaborated on together? Five, four, two. Correct, for two points. Wow. All Perfect right. Perfect round two. Eight points. So Ethan Irwin now has 15 to his name. 15 points. 15. 15-9, and now the challenger will spin. It is 15-9. All right, Dan, give it your best shot. <laughs> there you go. Takes a little to prime it. Disney films. I'll take it. He's going to take it. He's going to take it. He's going to take Disney films. And that means I get to say the name of the patron who sponsored that wheel slice, sponsoring Disney Slice. Give a big hand to Ethan Naftalin. Ethan Naftalin. All right. I thought you were going to say Erwin. That would have been a little uh, How about a conflict of interest, no? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we should point out, uh, competitors are not allowed to sponsor wheel slices. Right. That seems unsavory. All right. Mr. Merle, your question in the world of Disney films, your first of four. What is the name of the villainous sea witch in Disney's The Little Mermaid? Ursula. It is Ursula, two points. All right, your next question. This musical tribute to the world of Uncle Remus co-starred Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel in what controversial Disney film? Yes, yes. Song of the South. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I would have to give that answer on this show. <laughs> We're all surprised. You know, Disney makes a lot of movies, and we asked a Song of the South question. <laughs> Looking for a new writer. <laughs> Kidding. All right. Your next question, Dan, your penultimate one in this category. You'll find main characters by the name of Meg and Phil in what Disney animated film? Uh, multiple choice. Is it A, Hercules, B, Big Hero 6, C, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or D, Wreck-It Ralph? Hercules. It is Hercules one for point. a point. So Dan gets himself within one here. It is 15 to 14. All right, so Ethan has a one-point lead. <laughs> Dan Merle's last question here. Dan Merle's last question. Should he hit it, he's going to take a two-point lead. If he gets it one point, I'll tie it. Here we go. All right, please, no heckling the hosts, the competitors, or the scoreboard. <laughs> Dan, your last question. Who stars as a busy realtor whose family is invited to a mysterious manor in 2003's Haunted Mansion? Eddie Murphy. The comic Two legend point. is correct. All right. So Dan takes the lead here. 16-15, a challenger for his second round in a row now has the lead as we get to 16, it's 16-15, right? Yes, it is 16-15. <laughs> 16, 15, okay, now round number three, which is the betting round of the championship. Mark, how does that work? The betting round. So uh, a note to the crew, don't take the wheel off the set just yet. We need the wheel. <laughs> in the betting round, we're going to spin that wheel. Uh, Dan is in the lead, so he's going to spin it. And good, good, good spin, round and round spin. it goes. Whatever the wheel lands on, the competitors are going to hear one question from that category. Now, once we settle on which category it is, you are going to bet points. You can bet zero points. You can bet all the way up to three points. If you get the question right, you gain that many points. If you miss the question, you lose as many points as you bet. So it could be a three-point swing for each competitor either way. Right. All right. So let's get that wheel up there. Give it a spin. Thank you, Dan, from the pegs. There you go. It's like the force. <laughs> now what are we going to land on here? Thrillers. Thrillers, all right. Thrillers. So thrillers, how many points? This is where the strategy comes yeah. in, Mark. Yeah. How right many town. points will they bet? Big round here. What would you bet for thrill? You'd probably bet zero. I was terrible at this game. All right, here we go. <laughs> Can I uh, just uh, just don't show the crop, but just uh, maybe maybe let me cheat. Got gotcha? you. Got gotcha. you. All right. All right, here we go, guys. So you wrote your points down. I got it. Okay, you it's got it. It's all in the noggin. All right, here we go, gentlemen. Who plays suspected kidnapper? Alex Jones in Denis Villeneuve's Prisoner. Down their answer, thinking about it. Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. 
All right, pens down. And Dan, how many points did you bet? I wagered two points. And you took? Paul Dano. Ethan, how many, how many points? Uh, three points. Three points. And I also said Paul Dano. Paul Dano, so oh, Ethan ties it up. <laughs> Ethan ties it up. 18-18. 18-18. A battle of the Titans continues. 18-18. Wow. It's everything we wanted it to be. Hold on, we gotta find the speed run. All right, so, okay, now we get to round number four and the speed round. The speed round will work this way. There will be... I'm going to... Uh, the speed round is about to happen. And you know, Christian, it reminds me of a song. I'm going to be up here judging, and I will call the name out of the competitor who hit the buzzer first. This is known as the buzzer round because, as you see, we have presented each competitor with a buzzer. I've never felt more like a game show host yeah, than you I look do like right one. Now. You look like one. It works for you, though. Just stay away from Jeopardy, you hack! <laughs> Once right, you okay. hear the question, you may hit the buzzer as soon as the question has begun being asked. So if you think you know the answer before the question is finished, Ashton, go ahead and buzz in. Okay, so you guys know how the game works now. Christian's going to ask the question. I will make the ruling. Once I say the competitor's name, whose buzzer lit up green, they're going to have exactly two seconds to answer the question. If you get the question right, you get a point. If you miss the question, you lose a point. So be very careful before you buzz in because I'm going to say your name, and you have one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and we are out. Ethan, do you understand the rules as I present? Them. Yes, I do. Dan Merle, do you understand the rules as I presented them? Yes, sir. Christian, we have a new car. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, gentlemen, here we go. Five questions, speed round. My, Mark will be counting down. Here, here we go. Question one. Ben Affleck and John Favreau are a team of lawyers in which comic book film? Ethan. Daredevil. Correct. This 1980s film starred Chris Sarandon Robin Wright, Carrie Elwes, Ethan, Princess Bride. One point. <laughs> what was the first full-length feature film directed by Ryan Coogler? Dan, Fruitvale Station. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right. Who directed The Outlaw, Josie Wales? Dan. Clint Eastwood? Correct. Yeah. All right. Tie game. Tie it game. Is 20 points here. 20 points here. We're totally tied. One more speed round question. Here's the last question in the speed round. The Incredible Hulk, starring Edward Norton, was released in which year? Ethan. 2008. Yes. So what a battle it is. 21-20. The champion with a one-point lead. The challenger down by one, and man, this is everything it was hyped to be. 21-20 as we get into the fifth and final round, the championship round. Good fight here so far. Man. Oh, man, what a, what a battle it's been so far. Yeah. This is what you want. You Everyone. want nary a point separating the challenger from the current belt holder. It was fun being up there. That sound you heard was Drew Carey getting nervous about his job. I'm coming <laughs> for the prices right, Drew. All right. So round, round number five. How does it work, Mark? This is the final round. This is the round that will determine who gets to hold this belt. Will Ethan retain it? Will Dan, once again for the third time, claim the belt? In round number three, you're each going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from 1 to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of the movie trivia showdown up here at the answer desk. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five points. There's no penalty for missing a question, no stealing in round number five. It's you and all of your movie trivia know-how. Dan has 20 points. Ethan has 21 points. So, Ethan, you're in the lead. You can give us your series of numbers first. Um, I'm going to do 1, 8, and 16. 1, 8, and 16. Uh, they work for you usually. Dan. Uh, I will do 6, 14, and 3, please. 6, 14, and 3 for the challenger. And we start with Dan Merle. Dan Merle at number 6. Dan Merle at number 6. Scroll down to the... Yeah, here it is. All right. Now you scroll all the way down. Okay, here we go. Dan, go. number 6, your two-pointer is in the realm of Bradley Cooper movies, I believe. Is that the category? All yeah. right. Correct. Bradley Cooper movies. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Sorry. 
great. In the category number six, 2000s. 2000s. Ooh, okay. 2000s. All right, 2000s. Here we go. Who starred as a small town man, Tom Stahl, in the film A History of Violence? Vigo Mortensen. Correct. Two points. Takes the lead. Takes the lead, and it is now 22 21. Bounces back to Ethan Irwin, Mark, who chose number one. Ethan, you chose number one up here at the answer desk. That corresponds to the category of family films. Great. Films you watch with your whole family, even your drunk grandfather. <laughs> Ethan, in the world of family films, yep. your question is which teen star played the title character in Agent Cody Banks? Frankie Muniz. Correct. Also would have accepted Cody Hall for that one. All right. Dan Merle, Dan Merle, who chose number 14. Number 14, Quentin Tarantino movies. All right. Here we go. All right. In Pulp Fiction, where did Brett buy his tasty burger that he shares with Sam Jackson? Big Kahuna Burger. Three points! Now we bounce back to Ethan. All right. 25-23. Ethan Irwin now has to hit his three-pointer, which is category number eight. That is category number eight, Christian. And up here at the desk, that corresponds to the world of Alfred Hitchcock. Yep. Great. Alfred Hitchcock movies. All right. Alfred Hitchcock. Oh. For three questions. For three questions and three points. Great, I love this it. This is what we... Oh, okay, okay. In the world of Alfred Hitchcock, for three points. Alfred Hitchcock's first cameo in a color film was in what movie with a one-word title? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. It's the first one. Alfred Hitchcock's first cameo in a color film was in what movie with a one-word title? Five, four, three, two. Frenzy? That is incorrect looking for rope. Wow. Ooh. Rope. Ooh. All right, so now Ethan has to hit his five-pointer. If Ethan hits his five-pointer, it'll bounce back to Dan. If Ethan misses, Dan Morrill is the champion once again. Category number 16. 16. All right, Ethan. You selected for your five-point category number 16. Yes. And that corresponds Great. up here at the answer desk to movie taglines. Great. So movie taglines. And your question is, <laughs> what 2000s came out in the decade of the 2000s, animated film, had the following tagline, see our family and feel better about yours. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Last, or second one. What 2000s animated film had the following tagline, see our family and feel better about yours? Five, four, three, two. Repeat it one more time. Last one. What 2000s animated film had the following tagline? See our family and feel better about yours. Five. You may have this Four. One. Meet the Robinsons. And your winner! And new! Trivia Schmodam, champion of the world, once again, Dangerous Dan Morrow. Wow. Okay, Jay Washington grabs the belt. He's going to present it to Ethan, who will present it to the new champion. Dan's Dan done it again. He's a three-time champion, Mark. He's a three-time champion. 
crowd chanting his name. There he is. For three times. There he is. The drama that has unfolded He's here. He's done it again. He's what done it match. again. He's the champion. He's the champion of the world. He's done it. Three-time champion. Look at him. Look That's at him. He's done it. He's been determined. He amazing. worked. He got it. He is the first. He is a legend from collision all the way back here. There he goes. Dan Merle, the champion of the world, and now is going to be talking to Jen Sturger, the new champion, wow. Dangerous Dan Merle. Look at him, look at him, what a moment, what a moment. New York City, sold out Brooklyn, three-time champion of the world. What a moment, what a moment. The five horsemen winning a match for the five horsemen. Look at the crowd, Mark, they're the going fives. next. You deserve it, Chance. You deserve it, Chance. Christian, are we even going to do this interview? Jesus. <laughs> Look at this. Wow, unbelievable. Hi, Dan. <laughs> so, uh, Brooklyn, can I ask you something? Did you guys get your money's worth tonight? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to replace the ceiling tiles because of what you two just put on up there. Do you realize this? You had a perfect game. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Wow. You didn't miss a single question. I did not know that. I thought it was going to come down to, honestly, maybe my two points versus his three. Because Ethan, this is not something that I did here tonight. This is something that we did. Because I couldn't have had that game without Ethan. I mean, the showmanship between you two has been absolutely unreal. You know, a lot of rivalries, there can be a heat of just, you know, attitudes, but you two is just straight knowledge and just camaraderie and sportsmanship. Dan, this has been a crazy year for you. Between the reveal of the horsemen at El Portal, you know, to, to obviously the match against Guy, which broke all of our hearts. And... I mean, look, you made me cry twice this year. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. What does today mean to you? And if you make me cry, so help you God. <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh, well, first of all, it's always great to win a championship, but um, my God, I can't, this is incredible to do it here. Uh, with this crowd is amazing. <laughs> And I love playing this game, and uh, it, it, you know, it's never easy. It's never easy to play. When I started playing this game, it wasn't easy. I came back, it wasn't easy, but I had a learning curve. There was things that I had to figure out. There were some, some things that I had to adjust to, and uh, you know, a lot of people said, well, the game moved on. He can't hang anymore. Uh, he can't play anymore. It's changed. He was gone for too long, and uh, you know, if there's anybody out there that still thinks that and wants to know where the belt is. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> I like it. Dan, obviously, you know, we didn't even cut promos before this match because, you're, because you're, your mouthpiece and dear friend, John Roca, is missing. What do you think bringing this belt back to the horseman means? I love that I can bring this back to that faction. We're not a bunch of fossils. <laughs> we may be old, but this is Jurassic Park. We're breaking out of the fence and we're taking it all down. That was almost a promo. He'd be very proud. Congratulations, Dan. Give it up for Dan Merle, guys.
And there's a respect between, look at Dan Merle and Ethan Irwin. Two gladiators. Two, yeah, there he is. Ethan Irwin, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, that didn't go the way you thought it would. <laughs> um, but I think that you've had a hell of a season. And to come out the way you have and face so many amazing opponents, the toughest opponents we have here, I mean, what a show. Guys. <laughs> what was happening? I mean, when you tied it up in, that thir in uh, the third round, what was going through your brain? Uh, look, I mean, this is a cliche thing to say, but I do play it like one point at a time. I was super stoked about that. I was really excited about the Paul Dano question. I felt like, ooh, I've got a shot. I can pull it out. But look, it's at the end of the day, it's luck of the draw. And you know, it's the numbers you picked, and perhaps it was hubris what I did. And uh, maybe I won't do that again. But, but no, regardless. I had a feeling that had Jay Washington's name all over it. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, yeah. No, look, Jay's, Jay is great. I actually think he is a wonderful compliment to me. I have learned a lot from this gentleman. He is a great manager. You proved yourself again, though, in these type of matches. Like I said, with the betting round and with the speed round, you proved that you really know how to play this game. What's going on next? Where do you guys want to take this, Jay? I'll hand it over. <laughs> uh, first of all, please give it up for my sister, Jen Sturgeon. That's enough. That's enough. She got enough. That's enough. Y'all can stop. Y'all can stop. She don't need her head pumped up no more. Uh, that was a tough match, and if you have to call it what it is, that's another clash of the titans. And if it goes down the way it goes down, this is a loss that doesn't hurt. Because who better to lose that title to than that man? <laughs> Arguably one of the greatest of all times. So, I know with what happened earlier and what happened now, people are wondering, what do you do next? So, what else do I do but put a machine and a big time together and say, and let, and I'm putting this to this camera and to the side and to your special guest judge, Shire Wolves, you got a challenge coming. All right, with that, Jay Washington putting together big time and the machine. Big development here. Yeah. I think that about it sums it up. Was this not the most amazing way to kick off the new season of the Schmodown? Unbelievable. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. All right, guys. All right. Thank you. I'm going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much Thank for having you me. Again. Thank you, Brooklyn. What a match. What a championship match. Give it up for Ethan Irwin and Jay Washington there. And Dan Great Merle. job by, Thank you by Jen getting so much uh, emotion, so much uh, just feelings out of, of Dan Merle. You really see how much it means to him. You yeah. see a worthy opponent in Ethan Irwin, but Dan getting that belt back, what a moment. It's going to go down in history as an all-timer. Well, the other thing, too, is remember this. Like, Ethan Irwin is not going anywhere in the singles division, and we had the first match that happened, and now we had the second match. I would not be surprised if we had the third match. I mean, those guys are the two best that we have right now. And there's going to be a lot of people gunning for that belt with Dan Merle. He's the first. He's the second player to make 11 victories. John Roca is the other one. Um, so now we're going to see exactly what the third title reign looks like for Dan Merle. Now, here we go. Now, I'm going to use this mic to tell about the future of Mr. Andrew Guy. Okay. All right, so for those of you who have been following, Andrew Guy, I mean, again, we talked about New Blood for what him and Team Action did for a while. 
And you can't, the, the, they bring out excitement, they bring out, uh, there's a lot that they've done. There's a lot they've accomplished. You, Andrew Guy, from what he did against John Roca, the spectacular, he paid the price for it. He came back and he didn't learn a damn thing. <laughs> so then what we said, he, he did something and he turned on his partner in the spectacular. I am watching and I said, all right, I told Andrew Guy, I'm going to make one decision and I'll make it at New York, but everyone, and it's, the consequences will be, you have to deal with them but you have to behave at the awards. So we thought that he did. But at the end, he couldn't help himself, screaming and yelling and insulting. He broke things behind stage. It was a disaster. So you guys are not going to be happy with this. Andrew Guy is suspended for the entire season. There will be no Andrew Guy. He will not be allowed in the building. I'm thinking about banning him from the league. I'm thinking about, and that is my final decision. There is, there is no more. The boss is back! You know, Harloff, you and I really haven't interacted that much, but I want you and Ellis to know I really appreciate what you've done here. I love this game. I love this game as much as anybody here. I eat, sleep, live, and breathe the schmodown, and I'd be sitting right there if I wasn't on this stage right now. Now, a lot of us have gotten a lot from this, myself included, and I'd be lying if I said that Andrew Guy has not disrespected this game, taken for granted every single opportunity put on his plate, and made a joke of each and everything in the Schmodown aside from him and his ego. I know this guy better than anyone in the world, and I can tell you firsthand, he's a joke. Now, I'm here tonight as a fan. That's why I'm here. Congratulations to Dan Merle. You deserve that title. And I hope one day I can be in the ring to take that belt from you in a match. But right now, Harloff, it's about your decision. Andrew Guy. It can't stand. I'm a changed man. For two years, I approached this game the wrong way. I didn't respect the game. And in turn, the game did not respect me. After losing to those Shire Wolves with my brother, Mark Riley, I've learned a thing or two. Now, you use the word brother sometimes and it means something different to you than it should. I put my faith in a friend that wasn't a friend at all. This guy didn't have my back. And it took me getting put through a fucking coffee table to learn that lesson. I heard you talk suspension. Yeah. Six months? A year. You guys year. might ask, how long is long enough? How many months are fair? I'll tell you what I think. None. Not a single day. I can't, I cannot not punish him. I've got to punish him. He's been, he's, he's a disaster. He's out of control, I agree. Yeah. But that's not how you deal with this, Harloff. 
You suspended him once before. What happened? He came back. He mocked one of the greatest players of all time. And then you gave him an award for it. It's a broken system. It's a broken system. It's true. You suspend this guy. You give him all the power in the world. You play to his ego. And you deprive this Schmodown faithful, the real fans, and the real card-carrying members of the Action Army. I see you. I know who's here. Of what you all deserve. Me kicking guy's ass. Oh, wait, wait. You hear me, wait. Andrew? I'm coming for you. Wait, my wait. My road's a title. You're in my fucking way. Well, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Here's the, here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. You're rewarding him. Because if I give him a shot and he beats you, if he beats you, that means he'll be 3-1 and one and he'll be right up there with a chance to win. And I'm not going to reward him that way. I don't, I don't give a shit, Harloff. Give him a teammate. He says he has a teammate. Put him in a triple threat. Intergeeked him. I'll kick his ass any way you put him in the ring. You'll face you him what. no matter what. No matter what, any match that I put you in against him, you want it. No matter what. I'm going to let them decide. Let me. So, and I want you to be fair. I want you to be fair. And not just because of what you think. To be fair, I'm going to do this once. Should I suspend Guy for a year? No! It's like a broken system. Should I let him play? Yeah! One month, one month suspension and you got him in a match. Yeah! You know, Harloff, I'm glad you listened to Reason. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs> He's screaming for Iron Man. Uh. All right, so Ben Bateman crashes the New York event. Yeah. We have it. Look, these two, it was like two people, just two kids fighting over a fire truck or something. Uh, know. You know, always good to see Ben. It was nice to see him. The that shirt like gets a little him. more open every time he gets on stage. All right, so we got a lot to deal with in season six, but what an opener, Brooklyn. How we feeling? <laughs> Chance and Janine, the new movie trivia showdown champion, Dan Merle. Thank you to all the patrons. Thank you to everyone watching on the live stream. Check out the website, triviasd.com. Christian Harloff. Mark Ellis, signing off on the kickoff of season six. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a hell of a ride. We'll see you real Thank soon. Thank you!